Welcome back to News On. I want to welcome back our panel. Joining us once again, Melissa Armo and Robin Byro. So here's a story that kind of caught our eye, especially uh, Robin. This probably catches your eye. So new census data being released today. It's expected to help shape voting districts ahead of next year's midterm elections. Now, the data shows population changes. No big surprise there. That information could change the, the balance of power in the U.S. House as it will be used to redraw 429 House districts and 44 states. Now, Republicans are looking to gain five seats in the U.S. House in order to retake control of the chamber. This could have huge political ramifications, could it not, Robin? Absolutely. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm, I wasn't born yesterday. Gerrymandering across is a bipartisan issue. Uh, Democrats have done it too. In my former home state, you could look at Jim Clyburn's district uh, as an example of that. But uh, it's something that I wish didn't exist. I wish it were more fair. Um, so yes, when they redraw these maps, a lot of times this is done in secret. I read the stories. This is this is a problem mm -hmm. going forward. And the balance of power is is painfully close. We are expected as Democrats to lose seats in the House and frankly lose uh, the majority for the midterms if we don't really ramp it up. And this only makes it more difficult. Melissa. Well, he's right. Robin is right. I think that 2022 is going to be an important year. I also think that even if they didn't have the redistricting, redistricting, I think that that they're going to lose some seats. I think there's whenever you have an imbalance of power, we have too much power. I think right now on one side, there, you, when you have too much power on the side of the Democrats, it's 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 shifting. And again, we're eight months into this. Look at this 3.5 trillion. And that happens no matter what. Just to chime in yeah. there, Melissa, that happens no matter what. If if yeah. one party has too much control, we typically see this happen regardless of any particular issue, but go ahead. Well, I thought gerrymandering was illegal. It's interesting when I was reading about it, I'm like, wait a minute, are they allowed to do this? But apparently they have. Again, yeah. this is something that happens in secret, like Robin said. I didn't realize how often this actually happens, how often they redistrict it. Again, sometimes it favors the Democrats, sometimes it favors Republicans. In this instance, I think it's gonna favor the Republicans. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've heard this issue brought up time and time and time again, but it seems like if you're not the one losing and you stand to gain ground, then suddenly the issue kind of just disappears. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if this comes up again, because really it, it's the people that are living in these areas that are suffering from it. You know, you want it to best represent that area. I always love to know That's people's right. thoughts on that, you know. Um, you can always let us know again by finding me at Real RealMorandaCon, hashtag share your voice. Uh, so something interesting uh, happening that a lot that's getting a lot of reaction today. A North Virginia school board voted to approve a new policy expanding transgender rights for students. The new policy now requires teachers to use preferred pronouns and allow students to choose transgender students to play in sports that fit their gender or his or her gender. I I'm not even sure if I'm using the right pronoun uh, now, Robin, but. Uh, you know, you're a father of two boys. Uh, what do you th what do you think about this? It's there's a lot to unpack. Uh, first of all, gender dysphoria is a medical yeah. condition diagnosed by a medical doctor, so it's a real thing. Um, misgendering is a form of abuse and bullying. The, in the situation here in Virginia, there were teachers who were misgendering their students on purpose uh, to denigrate and bully them. That's never okay. No teacher should ever do that to a student. Personally, I hate the pronoun game. <laughs> It, it, it's getting complicated and look, we could look at the alphabet just in, I, I'm openly gay, but now it's supposed to be LGBTQIAA+. I mean, like, there's no way I'm going to say that, um, but it <laughs> but does you at just the end did. of the day. And I'm impressed. <laughs> well, I'm glad I remembered. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to treating people with decency and respect. It's what I was taught in the military. I wish we could just have that as a baseline. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, and I, there are a couple of people that want to be referred to as them and, and they, and I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I certainly don't want anybody to feel left out. Um, I'm all for that, being inclusive, but yeah, it's very odd. And you talked about body dysmorphia. There is still not a consensus in the medical community when it comes to being transgender, there are still people out there that believe it's an illness or people out there that believe that they were born this way. I'm not a medical expert, nor am I going to pretend to be. But Melissa, 
What are your thoughts about this happening in schools and could we see it happen in more schools around the country? I don't know if it's gonna happen in more schools around the country, but it's kind of surprising that it's happening in Virginia. You would have thought that this would have happened in some place like New York or even California before Virginia. The problem I have with it is with the sports. When you have, uh, I think it's advantageous uh, for, for people that were born as a man to be playing female sports, and then it's not as fair for the women. And so I think it's a problem for kids. In general, we're putting our kids through a terrible time in the last year and a half, having yeah. the in-home schooling, having to wear masks, having to withstand all of the confusion, what's going on with COVID. Why, why are we even dealing with this right now? We have so many larger, Other greater issues? problems right now than having to push this on our children. My God, just let kids be kids. I don't even think the kids are as much worried about this. While there might be a, an individual instance, like Robin mentioned, in general, I think kids just want to play with other kids. And they call him, if there's if her name is Sally, they call her Salary. If his name is Bob, they call him Bob. They're not calling him by pronouns if they're kids. Right. And when you look at most research, I mean, it shows a very minute part of the population actually identifies as being transgender. So I don't know if this is as big of an issue as it's being made out to be. Having said that, uh, we did see athletes who identify as being transgender participate in the Olympics, and that stunned a lot of people because you had others being disqualified for marijuana use, used to treat anxiety, yet you had transgenders competing against, you know, people that were biologically born one way. So is this a changing of the times, Robin? And is this what's best for our kids? Let me say one thing, and I've been dying to say this. Uh, if anybody Go. gets a performance enhancement from marijuana, <laughs> I, I, that it blows my mind that they were disqualified for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but look. I have to um, agree with you on that. I'm going to laugh about yeah. that. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't know enough the, about the, it. Maybe there are some. <laughs> oh, gosh. But uh, I do think that, that it's unfair. Uh, we look if they're taking the, the the hormone therapy i understand that if you're a male and, and transition to female you do have muscle loss uh but there should probably be a period of time until you're able to compete in those sports as your new gender uh because i do see that there could be an unfair advantage if, if it, not not enough time has passed for you your muscle mass to to conform to what your new gender would be right uh, i think that's legitimate and you know what I think is just interesting about this whole thing? You were mentioning the LGBTQ plus. Um, they, they put this group t together, and, and I can tell you right now, they're not always seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. There, there are a lot of female athletes who are lesbians who are not happy about this at all. Um, so maybe if you're one of them, we'd love to hear from you. You can always chime in again by finding me at Real Miranda Khan. Real quickly, in the short time that I have remaining, because you are a retired Army Ranger, deeply concerning what we're seeing right now in Afghanistan, Taliban claiming, I believe, 10 cities just in a couple of weeks. Now there's thought that it could claim Kabul. Uh, how concerned are you about this? Robin. I'm deeply concerned. There will always be, we will always have some presence there, but it's not enough. It wasn't enough of two years ago, frankly. Um, this is going to be a problem. There will, will be a proliferation of, of terrorism uh, going forward, and it's, it's deeply concerning, Miranda. Melissa, last 30 seconds to you. You know, I agree with Robin, and if you watched the press conference yesterday, the, the, the White House secretary, she seemed to give legitimacy to, to the Taliban in a way that I just was almost shocked about what she said. I really think it is a problem. Again, we're trying to deal with so many things in our inner circle here in the United States. We can't forget about what's happening in other parts of the world. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot to take in. We're going to give um, our viewers the very latest on what's going on in Afghanistan, also the U.S. ambassador for Afghanistan, what he had to say about that. Thank you both. Robin, Melissa, always a pleasure. Enjoy the rest Thank of your you. week. Stick around because we're going to have a look at today's weather forecast as well. And again, as I mentioned, we're going to give you the very latest on the situation in Afghanistan. Not looking good what the ambassador from that country is saying to the U.S., what he would like the president to do coming up. You're watching News On.